Uh, share how Russ supported you throughout your career, throughout her career so far, what, what you did and how. You know. I, I made a record with her. That's, okay. what, that's, well, that's what I was, did to support her career. Okay. Um, how, how are you different, how is Harry different from other classical pianists? Well, I don't, I don't know if she's different from other classical pianists, but she has her own approach to the repertoire, which is, uh, you know, there's certain, there's certain things on the, on the record uh, that she plays that are standard pieces, and she approaches them differently than most other uh, pianists I've heard. Okay, good. Now, uh, did you start filming? Yep. yep. Oh, oh, yeah, perfect. go ahead. So you yes, sir. Okay. Um, okay, why did you choose to work with Harry? Well, um, shouldn't we see how we met first? Yes, I think we should go back there. <laughs> and go ahead okay. and say your name, just because you oh. know, other people won't know who you are. What do you mean? I know. Everyone in our world knows who he is. Okay. <laughs> um, so I should do that now? Yes. You yes. want me to say? What, but what do you want me to say about that? Oh, just say, yeah. Oh, 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 okay, I got it, I got yeah, it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got yeah. it, I got yeah. it. Yeah. About my background, no. Um, uh, hi, I'm Russ Teitelman, and I am the producer of the Harriet Stubbs uh, uh, album that we made that's called uh, Doors of Perception, Heaven and Hell, and it's rooted in, uh, I guess, fundamentally... Uh, it was called that because Harriet is a, uh, a Blake lover, and so um, a, a, a kind of the repertoire that was chosen uh, may seem random, but it has elements to describe the different phases of the Blakean philosophy, uh, you know, innocence and, and uh, etc. cetera. Um, Okay, so how did you meet? Ah, well, I met Harriet at Barney Greengrass. The, the, there's a waiter there, Julian, who's a friend of mine, who's a creative guy. And um, so I was there with, I don't know, I was there with a couple of guys. And he came over and, he, and we were talking. He said, oh, he said, you should meet Harriet Stubbs. And I said, okay, I'll meet her. He said, you know, she's a pianist and she's creative. And I said, okay, I'll meet her. He said, well, she's just over, over here at this other table. So he took me over there, and we talked for a while, and then we kept talking, and uh, I, I suggested that we go in and just start doing a couple of things. Uh, so uh, we went up to the Jacob Burns Film Center, where where uh, they offer certain sometimes they'll offer people time for free, if they you know if the students can come and you know for different reasons, <clears throat> if you're a friend of the of the film center. And uh, so we went, and, and we started to record, and the piano actually wasn't up to what we needed. You know, it was an okay piano, but it wasn't really what we needed. But we recorded, uh, we recorded something that's on the record on that piano, and it, and it sounds pretty damn good. Um, so anyway, that's how I met her, through Julian at Barney Greengrass. <laughs> And a good whitefish salad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even though she seems like a different genre of music, how did you decide that you would work together? Um, you know, I don't really know how that happened. It just kind of evolved. You know, I guess I suggested let's go in, and we started, and then we just kept going. You know, then I, I said, well, let's do the Shostakovich preludes, and she wanted to do the Bach. Busoni uh, Chacon, that monster that she plays, and um, and uh, you know some of the other things. So we, we just kept going, you know. And how did you get the great idea to put Marian Faithful on the record? Well, uh, Harriet had had arranged different uh, different bits from from Blake's writing into one kind of stanza. And, which reflected her, you know, what she wanted to say. She, and she did a pretty good job. Uh, so then I said, gee, you know, we ought to get somebody, you know, somebody to read this, get somebody, you know, Meryl Streep or something. And then she said, well, I want Patti Smith. <laughs> so I said, that's a good idea. So she saw Patti at a book signing and approached her and asked her if she'd do it, and, and uh, she, did it, she didn't. So I thought, 
what about Marianne Faithful? So I contacted Marianne and she said yes. So we just sent that we just sent the piece, you know, to her manager and um, and she read it in Paris and sent it back to us. It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, let's just see if there's anything. Um, any extra? And, yeah, probably the rest of you can show us the album's narrative. Does the, does the, what this is all about, the heaven and the hell, does that mean something to you too? Was that one of the things that attracted you? Well, no. Uh, it, 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 that evolved. You know, it wasn't something that, uh, that I said, oh, this is, this is going to be for that, you know. I just was interested in, in having her do um, a broad spectrum of, of different composers from, you know, Mozart and Brahms all the way to Ligeti and, uh, and John Adams. She found this beautiful John Adams piece that Marianne reads over and that's a fantastic thing, you know. So we kind of, we start, we, we started with, uh, uh, well, the Adams opens the record, but then, you know, it goes right to the, the Mozart Rondo, I think, and, in A minor, a beautiful piece of music. And, you know, so there's that and the Brahms, which is kind of early, you know, romantic and, and deeply emotional uh, music, and ends with Ligeti, you know. So, you know, it's a, it spans a, 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 not only in time, but in, in spirit and, and um, And, and interest, you know, for, for me, you know, I, I found that very interesting, yeah. Okay. Awesome, perfect. Great, yeah. okay. Can you hear everything? I wasn't